Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Director of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Mr. Kailise Nkabinde, Mr. Nkosinati Ngumalo, and Mr. Piyush Kandelwal. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, welcome to our sixth episode of the program, Kel Vishwa, meaning World of Sport. Today, we have two dynamic sport lovers, Mr. Kaili Senkabinde and Mr. Nkosinati Bumalo. Mr. Kaili is a young and enthusiastic and positive-minded individual. He is a director of non-profit organization called Dream Big, Stay Humble. This organization is focused on building a network of mentors for the youth in order to achieve their desired goals. Some of the work that they are doing is to inter is integrated marketing solution, experimental marketing, digital designs. And lastly, when Mr. Kyle Shenkabinde was young, he always desired to help and make, sol and make solutions to people's Life and Mr. Nkosinati Ngumalo is a level three coach of soccer. He is a former Marisburg City and Ashdown United soccer player, and now he is also a director of Mboma Sport Foundation, where they help and arrange sport programs for all the youth in his area. Today. Mr. Kabinde will be having an interaction with Mr. Nkosinati Ngumalo. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome. Over to you, Kaili Seji. Thank you. Oh, Kaili thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Hello, gents, once again. It's nice to meet you guys. Um, so Kosina, it's a pleasure to actually meet you and where do I start off? Football. What what are you guys like sports? Um Mr. Kosina, it doesn't start it off. Um what inspired you to take sports, to take soccer as a sport? And how long have you played soccer for? And can you just tell us a bit more about yourself and what you did to take up sports and what made you take sports in soccer? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like you like you've said, um so I'm a retired soccer player now involved as a coach and um and the sport administrator yeah um at the organization of which uh I founded in 2014 uh mm. but I've kind of like started operating it in um almost a year now um and also my other involvement in sport I'm also um I'm also very much involved with netball uh, because the the sport foundation that I'm kind of like running, it mm. uh, you know it's a multi pool sporting court. So we do soccer, netball, as well as as well as athletic. Oh yes, maybe um to you know to now to answer your question, uh, why did I take soccer as as you know as a sport? Mm. Um, so. I took soccer as a sport simply because growing up in the township or a village, um, you kind of like, you, you don't have much of a choice, uh, as you will know, you know, um, if there is no, you know, if there is no soccer, there is nothing. It's either you just, you just sit at home or you just going around in the, in, in the township or village. So I just took so soccer as a sport just because I didn't have much of a choice. And then, uh, fortunately for me, um, I think I was talented. You know, uh, I played. You know, I played in the location and also in the village. Um, I played um, up until you know I was I was recognized as one uh, 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 by coach uh, by yeah by a certain coach. Uh, and then they and then they took me to you know to a formal team. You know where you have a team that. Uh, you know that trains every day at certain time and play games on the weekend yeah i think um yeah i didn't have much of a choice yeah you know uh it it was soccer or nothing mm. um also i've uh, i think uh, 
I was involved in soccer for about, um, you, you know, in total, it's 17 years. Uh, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, for mm -hmm. 17 years, uh, that's how long I was involved in soccer. Uh, for, for, for starters, I was playing like in the township, not formal soccer. But then mm -hmm. I played for eight years, trying to break through to a professional rank. Um, yeah, but I ended up with Mar with Marisbeck City. Yeah, so in total, I played soccer for about 17 years. Mm -hmm. And, wow. and I hasn't retired. I hasn't retired even now. You know, I play social soccer, like, you know, whenever I get the chance. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much for that, Kosinat. Um, Kosinat, see, this question about you right now is, is one of the questions that are asked in football specifically, because you mentioned that you grew up in the township. Football is only an option to play in the township. Growing up, mm -hmm. you were chosen to play with others other teams and you were picked handpicked by coaches my second question to you is what challenges did you face growing up because as a sportsman especially specifically in soccer in the industry where we are in south africa there's a lot of challenges could you mention a few challenges that you came across growing up in soccer and until so now what challenges can you just tell us that that, that came across um the first challenge, the first challenge that um, that a boy from a township or a village uh, that who, uh, that they will face, you know, when playing soccer or involved in the game of soccer, um, the challenge will be that of um, of a sporting equipment. You know, uh, we used to play barefooted, and and when. It, and when we have to go and play soccer matches, you are not allowed to play barefooted. Where are you going to get the soccer boots? Mm. So you were, you were kind of like forced to, you know, to go out and borrow. So yeah, that was the biggest, biggest challenge when I started playing the formal soccer. And also at home, they they really never understand soccer. That <laughs> you, you will play yeah. so it's serious. That every day you will go to practice, you know. They will just tell you that you you need to prioritize school and also the the house chores. So so if you if, if if you didn't do the house chores and you didn't do well in your school, you know work, then there is no soccer for you. Mm. You know I think uh, yeah those were the two challenges that I kind of like face as a soccer player. Um, the proper playing equipment and also you know uh. Growing up in the country that we grew up, never really understand soccer. They, mm. they, 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 the only thing they knew is that you it, soccer is just for social. You know, it's never it it, it, it has never been a career to them. Mm. You know, up until when um, when our coaches would kind of like come and and kind of like talk to them and say, please, can you have this boy like like every day because he's talented. And also when they started to hear people talking about you in the township, <laughs> that's when they will kind of like, see, yeah, yeah. Ish, you know, you, you, you can go and play, but then your coaches must buy you soccer boots and everything. Yeah, I think those were the two challenges that we have. Yeah, no, like, like, uh, yeah, by those the way, are up really, until today, by, it, 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 mm. yes, by the way, up until, up until today, you know, the kids of, of today, they, they facing the same challenges but now it's kind of like better because we as coaches now we we understand it more so so before we could even ask the kids to come uh you would have started uh you know you 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 would have started at their home and speak to their parents and try to get them to understand what exactly that you're trying to do yeah. Yeah. No, thank you so much for actually opening up to us and telling us challenges you came across in football and you're still facing them right now. I just want to find out a bit more, like, as you grew up, um, has soccer changed, has soccer shaped you uh, more internally as a person or is it as a way for you to become more externally stronger? Like, how did soccer shape you as a person right now? Has it shaped you to become a stronger person internally or, is, uh, or externally as a person? Can you just tell us how it shaped you to this far oh yes mm. um you know when you 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 first play you know it's just it's just sort of um you know sort so sort of a hobby you don't really you know understand you know what is it 
but now that you know look 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 looking back you know um i think soccer has kind of like extensively shaped me my my inner being you know you know when you in soccer you are forced to share everything whether you like it or not you know you know take that to life um you, you you know, in a way, you it's become very easy for you to share things with people. You, you know, even now, I have about I have about um, sixteen girls that plays netball. So mm. you know, um, you know, I kind of like use my salary. I use my salary to transport them to and from the training field. You know, so mm. for me, that's you know, I I really understand. You know, it doesn't feel like it's a loss. You know, because mm. I know that. Uh, not to have you know so it does kind of like share me in it kind of like shape me internally you know it's easy to share it also trains one to be you know to be resilient you know um there, there is a lot that you come across you know when you're playing the sport mm. um you know um I'm just thinking of something else. You know, there there were times when when we will kind of like go and sleep in the stadium while waiting to do the trials, like the following morning. You know, those all those things kind of like you know uh, shape you and make you strong as a human being. Mm. You know, I remember at one time I went to Fosloras, to Fosloras that is Israel in Johannesburg. Mm. You know, so the trials at Jomo Cosmos. Um, so we really didn't know anyone there. We didn't really know. You know, I, I remember we slept on the stand and then we wake up on the morning and kind of like, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, do the trials. And 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 the same afternoon we're back in the bus coming back to KZN. You know, it's you know, it, it's yeah, uh, it's uh, it's kind of like shape you, you know, internally. Yeah, obvious physically. You know, one is in the very uh, good, you know, physical condition even up to now. You know, I've just turned my 39 birthday, but like, like believe me, I'm sure you can see. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So it so so it does help you internally and you know and and externally. Mm-hmm. Like I. Said, yeah. No, no, it sounds it's like easy you for you to share, yeah. Yeah. It sounds like you got plenty of stories to tell us, no? <laughs> um, I just want to find out a bit more. Um, so like we understood that growing up, you started off um rural rural area development phase, you go chosen, you face challenges. And the other question I want to find out like what are the benefits of practicing soccer and how they transform you as an individual as, as an individual with soccer and the people around you? How did that benefit you and the people around you specifically in the, just specifically in soccer? Oh, so how how does playing soccer benefited me? Mm, mm, mm. Mm, you know, up and I like I don't can smoke. Mm. I've never tried the thing. Uh, I really not, you know, attribute that to anything else. You know, uh, I think I was always busy. Uh, even with uh, with driving, you know, I, you know, uh, it took me a very long time because I didn't have time. You know, I, I was always on the soccer field. Mm. You know, um, yeah, I think that's, you know, it. it it's contributed a lot, you know, to the kind of the human being that uh, that I've become now as an adult, you know, being yeah. disciplined, you know, being able to take instructions, you know, without retaliating, you know, um, also able to share. So, you, know, you, you know, back in the days, I mean, we we will show, we will share soccer jersey, even if it's wet, it means <laughs> you have to wait. You know, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it you know it shaped me you know in in ways it contributed a lot to a human being that I am, you know it's kind mm-hmm. of like also teach you humility, and also to be able to take um you know, not those kind words people say you know because in life people kind of like say unkind words to other people like now and then yeah. you know because as a former soccer player. I'm used to those words of insult, if I may put it like that. People will shout all their names, you know, to you while they are sitting on the stand. Mm. 
but then you, you won't really say anything. You will just keep quiet and keep on playing. You know, I think that's still, you know, it's still one of the values that I've carried on in life. You know, you can say whatever you want, yeah. but you, you, you will never hear me responding if it doesn't really build me up. Mm. And and yes. that's what takes a lot of discipline as well. Like I, I see where you're coming from. Cause hey, I hope you didn't get any red cards on the field. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was a very strong soccer player because I was playing position six. Oh. Yeah, I know. yeah, it, it's you. Know, it, you know, I, I I was kind of like you. You see, I'm called Mboma in sport. Hence, I've I've named my sport foundation as Mboma Sport Foundation. So, you no, know, I was quite aggressive. I was quite quite aggressive on the field. Uh, like your cousin, the kind of a player, <laughs> like Tina Shinengomash of those days. You know, okay. I was like kind of aggressive. But luckily, I I couldn't get a lot of uh, red cards. <laughs> okay. The reason why I asked this question it's 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 it's, it's, like, mm -hmm. it's a lineup for my next question because mm -hmm. in your whole career, can you share mm -hmm. the life changing experiences along your soccer journey? Like, if you can just mention three life life changing experiences along your soccer journey, what would they be? Besides red cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, uh, like life changing moments, you know, I think when I, um, you know, when I meet, when I met the, like the professional soccer players for the first time, you, you, you know, the players that you always see on TV, mm -hmm. you know, now you hear you kind of like training with them. Wow. That's, you know, that's something else. You just feel like, yeah, no, man, um, you know, I, I, I have arrived. You know, mm. I remember playing against um um I remember playing against um was it was it uh, I think it was it was not Dr. Kumalo, but or oh, oh, um Shuz Mosheu. You know, hey. I was very lucky to play against him. Yes. Hey. I did play hey, against yeah. him when I was on trials. Yes, I was on trials with uh with uh with Amazulu. Um, then I was very lucky then he, and then he was there, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's unfortunately that, um, I couldn't sign, I couldn't sign a professional contract, but that was really like life, life changing experience for me. And then, you know, it's kind of like validated, it's kind of like validated my dream that I can make it as well, you know? Yeah. So if I can rub shoulders with the likes of shoes, Moshe, yeah, and then you, you know it's kind of like validated it's my dream with Norman. I can also make it. Mm, mm, mm. Thanks, thanks, Bob Kumalo. Yeah. Um, Mr. Mm. Mr. Kumalo, this next question I want to find out, and I don't want to ask you about it's just whoever's listening to this this interview that we're talking to right now. It could be a young youngster who's in the rural mm -hmm. areas, who's in the town villages, someone who's mm -hmm. who's aspiring to become the next professional football player. What advice would you give mm -hmm. the viewers who are listening right now? Were interested to become a soccer professional player what tip would you give them um what advice would you give them if they listen to this to this interview right now mm. yeah like one uh i will just assure them that you know you know their dream are for real um mm. like i just said previously that your dreams are are for real and also work very hard um work very hard for your dreams because they you know, talent alone is not enough. It, mm. it has proven to to so many very talented players, but they've never really make it far. Mm. You know, um, work very hard, believe in yourself, um, mm. and also don't give up. Don't mm. give up. I think that's, you know, that's the most, because, you know, uh, life is full of, you know, it's full of uh, hiccups, you know. Yeah. On your way, in, 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 in on your way, you will find a lot of disappointment, but please take them as they are. Mm. I think that's yeah, uh, that's one thing that I will really yeah, that I'll really advise young soccer players. Mm -hmm. No, um, that's 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 yes. very inspiring, and I hope that whoever's listening to this right now will be inspired to take on yes. boots and to play soccer as as for a living, could be for fun, but for the passion of the sports. Um, just mm. to close off with the interview, I just want to have one more question for you. And this question mm. is just a whole um, wrap up to our, to our interview with you. And I just want to find out what inspires you and motivates you 
to continue to look to to motivate kids to continue with the sports of soccer and what inspires you just to carry on doing what you're doing and what motivates you yeah one it's love yo i love the game of soccer i love you cannot describe me without describing this game you, you know i love the game of soccer myself and and also it's kind of like you know um you know fulfill me you know to to be able to help you know um a young star you know uh to kind of like fulfill their dream as well mm. um and also knowing that uh you know when when you've seen someone that you've been guiding all these years and they are successful, it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like fill, you know, filled you up. And then you said, no, man, no, I've, I've, I've kind of like, I've kind of like contributed in this world. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I just want to contribute to the development of young people in, in a more better way, you know, um, because I know the path, you know, uh, I just want to guide them into the right direction. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Yes. No, um, Mr. Mumala, like, it was actually a pleasure and an honor to talk to you today. And for me, I also got inspiration and I hope whoever's listening to this will actually inspire themselves yes. and just to take on the sports, specifically in soccer and anything, just, to, and I hope everyone is inspired um thank you for your time and we are blessed to hear from you mr kosinati Mumalo. thank you so much thank you so much oh thank you very much for for this interview to finally happen yo I, i'm so happy thank you, mr. Mumalo. thank you so much that was mr kailish kabinde and mr kosinati Mumalo, who had a wonderful discussions about the journey of sport where Mr. Nkosinati Mumalo now he is a soccer coach level three. So to Kailise and Kabinde, boss, thank you very much. The interactions were very, very wonderful. To Director of Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Sri Piyush Kandelwal. I'd like to say thank you very much for taking part on today's program. To all our online participants, we'd like to say thank you for taking part on today's program. You are kindly advised to visit ICCR Devon Facebook page for all updates regarding the cultural programs organized by Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center in Deben. Once again to Mr. Kaili Seng Kabinde, thank you very much. Mr. Nkosinati Mumalo, thank you very much. So thank you very much sir, for all the time that you gave us this evening. To all of you, have a wonderful so evening. Much. Namaskar.